If you don't have your estate planning documents in order, this video is for you. Here to speak with me is Haley Tulitsky from Cook Capital. Hi, Haley. Hi, Hannah. It's great to be back. So what is estate planning? Can you tell me what that is and, and how we start? Absolutely. So no matter what stage of life that you're in, it is really important that you have an estate plan in place to protect your wishes and also your loved ones. I think a lot of times when people think of estate planning, they think of these really rich and old people and preparing for their death, but we know tragedy can happen at any time. And an estate plan doesn't have to be a really lengthy or complicated process, depending on where you're at in your life. Um, a lot of times you're going to want to meet with an estate attorney just to help you draft the correct documents. But if your situation is very, very simple, there are some really great online resources that I share um, in the article where you can create your estate plan online in less than 30 minutes or so. So it doesn't have to be long. It doesn't have to be complicated, but it is important that it gets done. So what's included in an estate? Yeah, an estate plan typically has four different components. And you want to get started by listing out anything that you own, aka your assets, and then make sure that you also list out any debts or liabilities that you have as well. That's just going to help um, get your big picture planning started. And then from there, you can get started with your estate plan and then break into those four different key components. Okay, so what's the first one? Yeah, the first one is what we most commonly think of, and that is your will. And so within the will, you wanna make sure that you name a guardian for your children if you have them. So this is the person that you trust to take care of them. Oftentimes it's going to be your spouse, but then think of having a backup person as well in case both of you were to pass away. Don't forget about your pets too. So that's another key component. You wanna make sure you have a guardian listed for your pets. That's something a lot of people don't think about. And then also you're gonna think about your assets that you have and how you want them distributed. So you can leave specific gifts to certain people. You can exclude certain people from your will. You can distribute it based on percentage or dollar amounts, and you can also leave money to charity. So you just want to think about where you really want the things that you own and where you want them to go. So what about um, a living will? Yeah, a lot of people don't really think about this, but a living will is a really important component of an estate plan. So that arranges your health care wishes if for like end of life care. So for example, if you were in a coma and you know, how, who's going to decide when it's the time to pull the plug to be quite blunt. So if you, you know, some people want as many life-saving procedures as possible, some people don't. So make sure that you indicate that in your living will. So that way your family members can better take care of you according to your wishes. Um, and what about the idea of power of attorney? So there's two different types of power of attorneys. And basically a power of attorney is someone that you grant access to make decisions on your behalf if you no longer were able to. So the first, first is a healthcare power of attorney. So this is someone that you would trust to make healthcare decisions on your behalf. Again, if you have that living will already in place, that's going to help that healthcare power of attorney make those tough decisions. And then also a financial power of attorney. So if you're in the hospital and you're unable to make decisions for yourself, who is a person that you trust to maybe write checks on your behalf, pay your bills, make investment decisions? And with the power of attorney, you have complete control when you draft that document. So you can list specific authorizations to specific people. So if you, for example, want some people to be able to write checks but not access your investment accounts, you can indicate that in your power of attorney document. And what about your health care records? Yeah, so a HIPAA authorization is just people that you would trust to access your health care documents in case they were needed. So a lot of times people do their spouse or a very close family member. That way, if you're in the hospital and someone needs access to your previous medical records, those people have permission to get those. Um, is there anything else you would include with estate planning? Yeah, an important piece of estate planning that people also forget too is your beneficiaries. So any beneficiaries that you have on your retirement accounts, so your 401k or IRAs, and any life insurance that you have, those beneficiaries override what you say in your will. So you want to make sure that you're reviewing not only your estate plan, but your beneficiaries at least annually and with any major life changes, because God forbid you don't want something to happen to you and then your beneficiary doesn't match what your will says, and then that can cause a lot of family tension. So just make sure that you're constantly, at least annually, reviewing your estate plan and your beneficiaries to make sure they're in line with your current life situation and what, you, what your wishes are. Okay, well, thank you so much for explaining estate planning to me. Um, thanks again. Haley Tulitsky, everyone. You're very welcome.